<laughs> oh, good to see you. And guys, good to have you on. Uh, welcome to those of you who are watching the replay and for those of you who are going to be watching live because I know you're about to come on any minute, right? <laughs> okay, so there we are. Um, tonight, guys, we're going to be talking about um, detoxification for weight loss because, you know, fat loss is really a process of detox. And often we don't really think about it that way. But along the way in, um, and throughout the process of losing weight, we hear this word detox thrown around a lot. Mm. And, um, and we don't always understand what that means or how we should even really go about it. And, you know, I really just wanted to kind of get that cleared up so you had a bit more of a holistic picture of what detox really is, what it looks like, and what are some things that we can do to help to support the body to detoxify. So, um, you know... When I think about my weight loss journey and, you know, I've been health coaching now for, this is my eighth year. And what I have learned is that the whole process of weight gain is really around um, an area or a time where there has been like a, an extreme stress. Okay. So sometimes that can be like a, a trauma, an emotional trauma, a physical stress, like even being pregnant or being in an accident or an injury. But essentially, it is around, uh, you know, you could pinpoint um, when your weight started to get out of control around, an, around a time where there was stress. Now, you know, when your body gets into that, into that state where it is just stressed the heck out, your whole vitality just goes down. Yeah. And when your vitality is down, your body just is not going to choose to um, start dealing with uh, anything that's not an absolute priority. So you know the saying, uh, you know, I don't have time to get sick. So if you're a mum, you could be the only one standing and the whole house is down. You know, everyone's got a cold or a flu and you just seem completely immune to it, right? But then, you know, you take a holiday and all of a sudden it hits you like a rock. And, you know, it's just because you, when you decide that you can't get sick, it's, it's a very similar concept. The body just decides, look, there's not enough vitality for, for us to deal with this right now. So we're just going to push it to the side. Mm -hmm. And usually what gets pushed to the side is the virus or the, or the bacteria or the toxin and in, in women's case, um, estrogen. And a, a very good storage place for your body is your fat. Yeah. Okay. So when we look at the whole process of weight gain um, and, we, and we get to a state of stress and we are gaining weight, hormonally, your whole body is driving and gearing you to get into calorie surplus. Because when you get into calorie surplus, it means that your body can start storing these, uh, these things into your fat. Okay, so it is a whole survival strategy. Now, the stress passes, okay, and... And now you want to get your body back, get your life back. You want to feel good because as well as putting on some weight, you also feel like crap. Okay. And now you're ready to do something about it. But the whole process of trying to get there, the, the steps in themselves add stress to an already stressful situation. And so you have to look at, you know, the, the whole process of the way you gained weight. And if we reverse engineer that, it is essentially a detox, right, Leanne? Uh, yeah, like absolutely, it's a detox. <laughs> the body, it is. It's it, you, at the same time as you're losing weight. Remember, the fat cells they were the they were the place that your body was storing what you couldn't deal with during that time. And so, if you allow your body to get access to your fat and you're burning fat, you're also releasing back into the bloodstream whatever it was that your body couldn't deal with at that time. And then come up all the symptoms. And oftentimes, the symptoms in themselves just take you to a point where, you know, weight loss and trying to get your, your health back on track just becomes such a low priority because you're so overwhelmed with all the symptoms. Mm. And so tonight, me and, Le me and Leanna are going to discuss weight loss and, uh, and, and the whole process of detoxification and what that really looks like. And um, the three things that we're going to cover is a little bit about the process that I use in my practice and how Leanne fits into that with homeopathy. Okay, so first of all, we'll look at the steps that we use to get a good start, okay, so to address your nutrition. Then we're going to look at homeopathy and how it supports detoxification. And then we're going to have a little bit of a rant about nutritional uh, cleansing, okay? So, okay, so first of all, let's just do a little bit on nutrition. Now, a lot of people put 
a very heavy focus on getting the diet perfect. Getting your diet perfect is not what it's about. Okay, you just need to, to find a place where you can get a good starting point. Most people, most of you, will be not eating um, to a very basic level. Like, are you prioritizing getting in three proper meals? You know, I know Leanne with how busy we get. I mean, it is an effort to just prioritize breakfast, lunch, and dinner. It can actually be too hard. (laughs) Yeah. I mean, how often do you see with your clients who are essentially mothers? Like, a lot of your clients are are mothers, right? Yeah. Yeah, a lot of clients are mothers and also really busy, uh, A-type personality, successful entrepreneurs or in the corporate world. And, um, you know, they're really busy. They're not really taking necessarily lunch breaks. So... It can be easy to skip yep, meals. Yeah, they're just very easy. And it's it's almost like we know what it is we need to do, but trying to fit that in and make it a priority, what ends up happening is, is that we see women just putting themselves last mm-hmm. because everything else is becoming has become a higher priority, right? Yeah. And it isn't necessarily the intention, but it is what ends up happening. And so the first step step with nutrition is to just get onto like a good eating plan. Okay. So can you prioritize eating three main meals? All right. And, and can you first make sure before you get your uh, head into the, the game of weight loss, can you make sure that your starting point has a good foundation? So can you eat three main meals? Can your calories be just at a good maintenance uh, base level of calories? Okay, and then we can start, hey, Jolie, (laughs) then we can start looking at um, creating a caloric deficit. Because remember, as soon as we start to create that calorie deficit for weight loss, it's at that point that you're going to be releasing all of the crap that was stored in your fat out into the body. Okay, then we're going to start to be dealing with the symptoms of that. So nutrition first is it just gives you a good solid foundation. Okay. Now let's move into um, homeopathy and the role that that plays for detox. So Leanne, you know, when I, when I um, had been working with you for a while and had, you know, you'd been working with a number of my clients, I'd seen that after a really good remedy, right, they were having some detox symptoms, Yeah. right? And so sometimes, sometimes the remedy was such a good fit that it, it was immediately Um, alleviating a symptom so say for example if one of my clients was feeling really anxious um, and uh, and irritable and had a little bit of depression going on a really good remedy fit would just help them feel like awesome yeah they'd lighten up and then they'd lighten up right there'd be like a load lifted off their Mm -hmm. shoulders and they'd feel like you know great but then not but then following that what i would see is is that the body would get into detox yes yes okay yeah all right. Tell it. Tell us about that. Okay. <laughs> okay. So if you've been following uh, Taryn and I talking, you would have heard me just go on and on and on about bacteria and viruses. But there's also, you know, there's things like chemical sprays and lots of toxins. There can be heavy metals. What I've been seeing in my clinic actually is, um, you know, as we work with somebody, uh, there'll be a few symptoms kind of lurking about that don't really clear with good remedies. And then all of a sudden they'll throw up an acute, so they'll have a little bit of a healing crisis or, as you say, a bit of a detox session. And up, mm-hmm. when I take these symptoms and put it into my homeopathic software and analyze the case, things like heavy metals will come up. Things like uh, lead and aluminium and mercury, especially if they've been full of um, fillings, uh, silver fillings, especially if your mum was full of silver fillings, that was a big thing in the previous generation to drill and fill the teeth and preempt mm-hmm. hollow teeth. And so, mm-hmm. um, hi Christiana. So, um, so yes, yeah, so that comes up, and these sorts of things are quite hidden and can take a, a few remedies, a little while of uh, cleansing, detoxing, getting healthy, and the body will really just want to throw this off. When that comes up and we give a good remedy um, and give the right remedy that helps the body eliminate those things, uh, then you'll notice on the other side of your little healing crisis a big lift in energy and the ability to uh, think and not being foggy. Thanks. 
yep. Suddenly, yeah. when you were yeah. so tired at night that all you could do was Netflix, now, you know, you can actually get up and do some other things. You've got some energy and some will and some passion and some drive. Um, and and mm -hmm. getting up and doing those things seemed really easy, whereas before it seemed like such a monumental effort. So, mm. uh, hi, Caroline. And Nicola. Hey, hi, Caroline. Nick. So, um, <laughs> So, yeah, so these are all the uh, things that we see after we give a good remedy. Uh, the things that come up for detox can be, you know, not just the chemicals and the heavy metals and the bacteria and the viruses. Um, but, of course, uh, it's balancing the system. So with homeopathy, we're balancing the system, mm, um, balancing the yeah. hormones, uh, yeah. supporting the elimination <laughs> channels, supporting the liver and the kidneys. Uh, very often I'll give a good remedy and someone will come in and they've got a sore back just above their lower back well that's kidneys often so mm -hmm. um yeah. it just means the kidneys are going uh, and kind of uh getting a little bit congested yeah. with everything they're trying to um, yeah. drain out yeah yeah so those are those yeah. are and, some of the things sorry taryn well i was i was gonna say i remember when we first started to have conversations about what was going on because i was seeing such epic results i was like what the hell is actually going on here <laughs> like what is happening you know, and um, I remember um, you talking about direction of cure. Mm -hmm. And, you know, at the time, it, it sounded good, but I didn't actually know what you meant by um, if, it, if this is happening, if, if the symptoms are going this way, Taryn, then it means we're moving in the right direction of cure, yeah. right? So tell us a little bit about what you mean by okay. um, direction of cure. So direction of cure is a homeopathic principle or it's a, it's a law, a homeopathic law. Um, and it's how we tell if a remedy is working. So um, because it can be pretty complex, the symptoms that people throw up after we give a good remedy, especially if they're chronically sick. And so we need to ascertain, is our remedy actually working well or is it not? Um, and the direction of cure, the law of the direction of cure, really, um, it, it talks about really some very basic uh, principles. So the first one is uh, when we give a good remedy, the emotional mental state should calm, should ease, should improve, uh, and then you might see um, the illness come out in the physical. For instance, really simple, um, if I'm treating someone for hormonal issues and they have terrible PMT um, and no pain mm. in the period, but terrible PMT, mm. and we give a good mm. remedy and they come back the following month and they go, no PMT, I didn't even know I was going to get my period. Yeah. Uh, but but it was painful. Mm -hmm. I'd be like, yes, yeah. good direction yeah. of cure. <laughs> because yeah. okay. it's gone from the emotional out into the physical. Now we can deal with the physical. So that's one of okay. the principles. Uh, the mm -hmm. other principle is that the... And that happened to me, by the way. Did it? Yeah, that happened to me. Yeah. Yep, I used to get really, really bad cramps. And, um, and then I went through a time where I was heavily supplementing and, and didn't get cramps. And then... As you started to treat me, um, I went, you know, there was a, lo a lot of improvements and I felt good, but then I got really bad cramps um, and, and yeah, which, had, which passed. I had it for about two periods yeah. and, um, and then it went away. But I was like, what the heck is this doing back again? Yes. And then remembered directly the cure. Absolutely. Yep. And if old symptoms come up that you've had in the past and they sort of come up a little bit milder than before, that's a very good sign because the body's um, mm. either bringing them up to show me to clear or they're going to clear anyway. Um, so one of the other main principles of the law of cure is that uh, the deeper organs, we want to see them get better. Um, if the disease seems to come back out onto the surface or the outer organs, that's okay. Uh, an example is if I'm, I'm uh, treating a child with asthma and um, mm. eczema comes out, the asthma improves, but the eczema comes out, that is absolutely brilliant yeah. because the disease, the dis-ease, is uh, coming yeah. from the deeper the organ surface. onto the skin. Yeah. So inner to yeah. outer, really awesome. Yeah. And then we I remember treat. when that happened to Ollie and I just about had a heart attack and then yeah. I had to, you know, realize that detox is not always pretty. Yeah. In fact, I don't know if it's pretty at all. <laughs> <laughs> it doesn't feel pretty sometimes. <laughs> no. Yeah. And often, um, and often, you know, when, when you uh, say, for example, when you very first start a diet or you start to clean up your eating, you can get some of those symptoms, that irritability when the liver gets a bit congested and, you know, and the, um, you know, maybe you break out in a bit of a rash or you get headache -y or, or withdrawal -y or you, you know, as we were talking about last week, Leanne, your hair starts to get all oily and, yep. you know, 
you can get all these symptoms. And when you start a, a diet, you can be okay with that for the first few days because it's familiar. But as you start to get into those kind of deeper and more um, and more heavier symptoms of detox, sometimes it can be a little bit scary because you're like, what the hang is going on? Yeah. Right? Like what is going on? And so really understanding what healing looks like and then it, it, it helps to manage expectations. So, you know, as an example, Leanne, uh, like last week when my when Ollie, my son, was sick, um, he had a, a cough and it was really rattly and mucusy in his chest. And, you know, he, whenever he gets a cough, he, he gets it in this same kind of a way. And so I've learned um, since you very first started treating him the, the trio of remedies to use when he has these symptoms. And before... I would just give him those remedies, not really understanding why I was giving the remedies. And it's through the process of working with him, working with me and, and sending you clients that I've seen that actually there is a whole lot of healing and detox going on. You know, when I, when I would give Ollie the, the remedy for the chesty and the mucusy cough, right? Mm -hmm. If you're a parent, you'll see that, um, that it then moves up into the yes. throat and into a bit of a tickle and then it moves up and out and you get like the streaming snotty nose yes. right yep so that's and going from before yeah right out yes because how else is the body yeah. going to get it out yeah. right it's got to come out and so if you look at all the exit pathways that the body has like that's a pretty good one yeah and that's <laughs> like, all the that's the exit pathway of the respiratory system because yep. the other principle the last principle of laura cure is from above down but the exception to right. that is the lungs up to the sinus. So if, right. if someone rings me and says, hey, my cough is so much better, but my nose is streaming. I'm like, yes, it's all coming awesome. out. Yeah. yeah, 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 perfect. I um, I would see, as I would see his nose streaming in the past, I would be like, oh my gosh, he's not getting better. Like his nose is so terrible. Now I'm like, yes, streaming nose, like yes. bring on the snot, yeah. like get all that green out. You know? Yes, exactly. We love discharge. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And then, you know, the, and so going from that uh, above down, so the skin is often where you see that. And I might get uh, clients come in uh, with boils and their boils might be under the armpit, say, or something like that. And then as we treat them, they're no longer there. They're on their calf and eventually it goes. So going out um, the extremities. And you'll often see this with allergic reactions. If your kids get hives, to anything or welts, allergic kind of welts, um, as the allergy reaction moves out of the body, will often move out down the fingers and toes. Yeah. All right. Well, again, similar thing that happened to Ollie yeah. when he was sick. Well, guys, you know, like when you when you are embarking on a real health journey and you know you want to lose weight and you want to feel your very very best, I know that for the majority of you, feeling your best is the priority. And if we could shave off some kilos and that'd be like the sweet cherry on the cake and if you go through and you're, you're applying the, the right strategies at the right time and you're allowing your body to detoxify you know you're help you're encouraging your body to heal you're helping it along mm. with that whole process and you know doing it this way and using homeopathic support to help the body to detoxify what i've noticed is is that it helps us to adhere to our plan okay you know, if you can, if you can relate to being a cereal dieter or a yo-yo dieter or a chronic dieter, not really feeling like you're ever going to get on top of it, then I can so relate to that. It is not even funny. You know, I, if you name a diet, I've probably done it or a variation of it, you know, and, and when you address it that way and you're not really addressing those real symptoms, you're not really getting to the root mm. of the problem. And so what I've noticed, and um, which was really, really interesting as we talk about detoxification in this direction of cure, is, is that I, as I have been having treatment with you for now the last year, I saw just a, uh, like if I was to timeline the different things that I had or symptoms or illnesses that I've had, if I was to timeline it, they have gone in reverse order. Yes, that's right? it. So, yeah. And, and so it's literally like peeling back the layers of the onion. So you talk about it being a homeopathic law, and that may be very true, but I also would suggest that it is the, the true law of what healing looks mm -hmm. like. And anything that fits within that law, it's like, then that's true healing. That's, that's when right. the body is actually 
right? And so as you peel back those layers of the onion, it gets really hard. So if you're wanting to get on top of your health, get on top of your your weight, get on top of, of your vitality and you want to feel awesome, you've got to be willing, you've got to be able to move through each of those layers of the onion. Yeah. As you're experiencing those detox symptoms, if they overwhelm you and you're not able to actually move through them physically or emotionally, that's often what derails women. Mm -hmm. That's often what derails us from being, from being able to move through and to keep taking the steps to move forward. Yeah. And the reason why I've seen homeopathy being such an amazing support for me and for my clients who are, who are like making a massive effort to get there is it's allowed people to stay the course. Yes. Right. Yeah. Because you can become <laughs> right. so easily overwhelmed when that old sadness comes back that you haven't felt for 15 mm. years. And it, you kind of, it can, it can easily make you just go into your little comfort eating or whatever it is. Um, or as you say, when you start detoxing and, and you feel you hit a layer of that and you feel terrible, you know, it's so easy mm. to slip off the track. Right. Mm. And yeah. what I love right. is sometimes when, uh, uh, so in the past when I've done uh, master cleans and things like that, and I've had some detox symptoms, sometimes just giving myself a little homeopathic remedy just to support the liver and the kidneys. And I've breezed through my yeah. cleans. Everything's been mild. Yeah, I'm about to, I, <laughs> Look, I, as we get into the third point, which is nutritional cleansing, I'm I'm about to place a massive order through your online store mm -hmm. of a whole bunch of um, liver supports for people who are going through that nutritional cleanse to help because I'm telling you, like, it just, I mean, I don't have to tell you, it makes a massive difference, yeah. <laughs> you know? Yeah, yeah to, to be able to get through those detox symptoms. Yeah. I mean, Sarah, I told you about how many nuxes I had to have uh, last week, right? And um, and I said to you, don't hold back on those nuxes, lady. <laughs> so, okay, so let's talk about nutritional cleansing because, you know, um, the reason why I got so passionate about cleansing in the first place, the idea of cleansing, huh, you know, and detox programs, they, they often uh, just sounded like a, a bit, you know, part truth, but mostly bollocks. In, yeah. in in my opinion and that's because it's just you know the the liver is just detoxing 100 percent of the time it's always detoxing you know and so you know cleanses nutritional cleanses detoxes detox systems anything that you use to encourage detoxification it's really got to the the principles have to be about supporting the liver you've got to make sure that that liver gets the support because that's the that's the organ that does the heavy lifting you yeah. know that that is the the number one organ for fat burning, yeah. you know, for vitality, for functioning well, right? So when I, as I started to, um, you know, go down the road of hormone health and how that affected uh, women in particular, it came from my own struggle. And that was with being able to efficiently uh, get rid of estrogen buildup. Mm. You see, like as a, um, as a young person, I'd had the worst periods ever. Like, I mean, I was in the sick bay for most of my schooling mm. since I got my period. And I never understood why I was the only one out of my friends who just suffered so terribly, lived on Nurofen and had problems with cysts and, 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 and. It was just a horrible experience for me. And on top of that, then I got such bad weight gain around my uh, my hips and my legs and, and my thighs and this terrible cellulite fat. And I just, I just didn't know how to deal with that. And for those of you who don't know my story, I, at one point I got so fed up with it that I almost, that I almost went through with liposuction. I was very, very seriously considering it because I thought that I had managed to figure out how to maintain a healthy lifestyle, but how could I just deal with this problem of not getting, being able to get rid of this estrogen buildup? So what I've really seen is, is that estrogen is one of the hormones that just the body has a real problem with getting rid of. Mm. And it's one of the reasons is that the liver is often not supported very well nutritionally. Yep. Often, even when we do our best effort to eat well, we're not, the liver's just not getting the optimal amount of nutrients it needs. I mean, I talked about the liver doing a lot of heavy lifting. And because of that, the liver just needs a lot of nutrients. It needs heaps of nutrients that in the day and age and in the, the lifestyle that we lead, it just, we don't, the liver just really does not mm. get what we would like it to have, to be able to do that heavy lifting to its absolute optimal level of performance that it wants to have right 
And so estrogen just gets so not prioritized. Estrogen just becomes that hormone that the liver goes, well, you know, it's not really a priority because it's not a toxin. Like we make it. And so let's just, let's just detoxify what is the priority, something that's a little bit more life-threatening. And it recycles it back through the bloodstream and the blood and the body goes, well, we can't have that built up in the bloodstream. And so then pushes it into the fat store. Now, when you already have a problem with estrogen, you know, not being um, excreted very well and you get that and you get that uh, symptom pre-menstrually with like your moods and your, um, and irritability and, and the teariness and the, you know, the rah at your kids <laughs> and at your husband, you know, <laughs> you don't know where that rah is coming from. And you, you know, when you're getting those symptoms and you don't know how to deal with it, that, that is just an overload of estrogen. It's last month's estrogen and this month, yeah. you know, yeah. and it gets stored in your fat, right? Then you want to lose fat and you release all of that ish back into your bloodstream. All right. And then the liver gets loaded again and it just makes for a horrible experience when you're trying to, to lose weight. And so nutritional cleansing and fasting and strategies like that to help support the liver are really the, uh, the idea behind it all. So Leanne, why don't you, um, why don't you share? Because you, you, you've had actually more experience than what I have had with doing nutritional cleanses and fasts. I was mostly just really put off by them, but you've, you know, you've gone there. <laughs> and so, <laughs> and so what, what were some of the, what were some of the, like the principles behind what you would look for in a, um, in a good, in doing a good nutritional cleanse? Okay. So <clears throat> yeah, I have, I have gone there a little bit. I, um, mm. Yeah, I have. I used to, years ago, I used to do the Master Cleanse, which is, you know, that lemonade drink with the um, cane pepper and the really good quality maple syrup. And um, that was really yeah. fantastic. And that was really how I be first began to sort of um, get familiar with some of the detox symptoms, you know. Um, uh, I remember doing it on the second day, immediately all the tongue gets really coated white as the candida starts to kind of die off. And the, uh, your hair begins to get really greasy on the third day. Um, you can have mm -hmm. eruptions and pimples come out. Uh, and it's all the body okay. literally clearing old yeah. rancid fats that have been stored. You know, all those potato chips that you're having at the party and, the, <laughs> <laughs> and all the trans fats before we knew they were bad for us, yeah. that kind of stuff. Uh -huh. So yeah. um, all of that would sort of happen and then you'd hit a, a few days of just feeling amazing hardly needing any sleep mm -hmm. and just really feeling really energized and great and then uh, day seven eight you could hit another bad patch again where your body begins mm -hmm. to detox mm -hmm. more again mm -hmm. yeah um and yeah. then you know uh i sort of and i did really well on doing master cleanses at one point i was just doing um uh, just one day a week uh, just fasting and doing a master cleanse day um, and I remember after doing three, one a week for three weeks in a row, um, I just, uh, I just gave up sugar. I used to have sugar in my coffee, like you could stand the spoon up and, um, mm. and I just couldn't stand the taste of it anymore. So, you know, your body mm. really begins to go into autophagy, which is a scientific term. And it's, it's yeah. where the body, when you, when you rest the digestion a little bit, um, the body uses an immense amount of energy to digest your food. And when you can give it a little break and a little rest, then it can turn its mm -hmm. energy to starting to clean mm -hmm. up cellular debris. And that's what aut autophagy is. And that's how it digs into yep. those fat storage cells and begins to toss mm -hmm. out the stuff that we don't need anymore. Um, yeah. So, you know, I used to do that. And then uh, I actually did nine months, nine months solid of raw veganism. <laughs> Uh, yeah, I had my yeah had my commercial dehydrator and I was doing my flaxseed crackers <laughs> and my breads and my smoothies and I made oat cookies <laughs> yeah. once from scratch, soaked them for forty eight hours and ground them down and dried my blueberries. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> but I felt amazing. And, yeah, I did, yeah. and when I was doing yeah. that, I had um, I remember once my scalp uh, became really inflamed and. Um, it was sore. And when I touched it, you know, when you touch your scalp, it, you feel your skull mm -hmm. immediately underneath it, right? Mm -hmm. My finger mm -hmm. went into my scalp like a water bed. Wow. God. Yeah. It was revolting and, uh, <laughs> and really uncomfortable. And I looked all this up yeah. in my homeopathic software and, uh, and it was mercury. 
right. Mercury. So I, right. I would have been, been right within your mum's time. Yeah. So I would have been detoxing um, mercury out of my yeah. system, and this was one of the ways it was yeah. coming out. So and that's quite a few. That's a, a, a symptom that we've been seeing as people are going through the as, as people are going through cleanses, right? That um, someone mentioned that they uh, smelt a vinegary smell coming off the skin, yeah. and another was like a mercury taste in the mouth. And yeah, I mean, look, they're resting the digestive system from processing food just allows the body to focus its attention on, you know, higher priority things to to kind of clean up, yeah. right? Essentially, when when I'm when I have evaluated uh, cleanses and detoxes, you know, I'm I'm going okay. Well, what is it that really really helps to support the liver in terms of nutrients, right? How how can we get the the liver into a um, into a well nutriented state so that it, yes. it's getting what it needs, so that as we get into a fasted state and um, and get into a bit of a cleanse, um, that it also has been nutrient. Build, yes. right because often a lot of detoxes and a lot of cleanses they just focus on the fasted element right which is in and which is how i understand it half of the equation right or maybe three quarters of the equation right we we uh we get the body a, a good cleanse or a good fast should get the calorie a body into a decent caloric deficit because accessing those fat stores is where is where a lot of the gunk is mm -hmm. that we need to get out but oftentimes when you when you do them um, you know, it can be difficult for the average person to really achieve because you've got to move through quite a few stages of feeling horrible and um, and and just being really hungry and you know. And so, you, for a lot of people, they've got to be really, really committed to be able to do one of those. And so, what I've what I've experienced and seen that a really, really good nutritional cleanse should also it should also take this the other half of the story and should be fully nutrienting the body yeah. right so you should be so nutriented up that you actually don't feel the hunger right because a lot of the time when you feel hunger what you're actually experiencing is nutrient deficiency cravings and the only way that your body can communicate to you that it's nutrient deficient is well it's not the only way but one of the main ways is through hunger through artificial hunger cravings and so if we can get the body into a highly nutriented state and get the liver loaded up on the nutrients that it needs, then when you go into a clean state, then it'll actually be able to do so without producing, you know, a lot of stress so that the whole process of fasting is, is not stressful in itself. And it just makes the experience a whole lot more doable yeah. and, um, and enjoyable. So really those are the things that I'm looking for um, in a clean. So, um, also, um, when I talked to you about this, Leanne, you talked about um, deworming, right, and, and, and the gut, because even though we're resting the whole digestive system, there's still like a lot of crap that's sitting in the colon that needs to get out, and the bacteria imbalance is just pretty horrific. You talked about candida die-off, so why don't you um, tell us a little bit about that? Okay, so candida lives, um, you know, Candida lives normally in the gut. It should be in balance. It's part and parcel of our microbiome, but it really easily gets out of balance. If you're on asthma medications, mm. you are more predisposed to have an overgrowth of candida. Um, if you are on any form of contraceptive pill, you are more predisposed to have an overgrowth of candida. And these are the people that I see come into my clinic and they're saying to me, I've been eating clean for years and I cannot get rid of this candida. And, um, and that's the difficulty. It gets really entrenched, and especially on those medications. So that's one part. And then we also have the standard American diet where, you know, you go into the cafe and everything really is sugar and white carbs that convert to sugar. Mm. And candida really mm -hmm. feeds on that. Thrives in that environment. Absolutely. Mm. So this is when you yeah. get that hangry state that happens when you haven't eaten for a while and your blood sugars drop and actually candida is beginning to die off especially if you've gone mm. low carbohydrate or something like that and the candida is mm. going to dry up, die off and you can get shaky and you can get um, angry and upset and really those sugar cravings get really strong, right? Um, because as soon as you eat some sugar, the candida goes, ah, oh, great, and it can grow again. And it, I'm alive. Yeah, and literally it <laughs> takes you over. Yeah. You become this little candida thing that is yeah. Uh, yeah. mentally, emotionally yeah. responding from it, right? Yeah. Make I had one of my clients. I sent to you who had problems with bulimia yeah and um 
and she also had wicked candida overgrowth and we started her off on a on an eating plan and then I sent her to you like quick smart and that was the last time she vomited yeah so good so yeah so the um yes yeah, so candida can be a real issue and the thing is is candida um, grows very nicely in a more of an acidic environment. So if your gut's a little bit, um, I mean, our stomach needs good hydrochloric acid. But what I mean is mm. pH balance. If your pH balance is a little bit acidic, that means your diet's really high in um, or, or lacks in probably greens and um, uh, good healthy whole foods. But it might be mm. high in the sugars, the the flours, the white flours, acidic yeah. kind of so foods. So essentially that's, Essentially, that's dehydration as well. Yes. You know, really, yeah, low in the minerals and then potassium and yes. then sodium rains and, yeah. Yep. And yep. so candida all yep. thrive and often, in Yeah. And often um, what, what people will do is, <laughs> and it's even something that I've suggested in the past because of how, because it was the only way that I thought to manage it was to use probiotics to just, mm. just that continual consumption of probiotics to try and stay on top of it. And I remember saying to you, Leanne, like, I have a regular auto order of of um, yeah. of probiotics because I cannot come off them because otherwise candida just goes crazy. Yes, and, and of course um, you're just managing and, and it. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. I actually um, called one of my old uh, friends, old clients today, and I was like, "Look, I got to talk to you about your gut health." And 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 you know, it's because when you're in that situation the only thing that people know how to do is look for ways to management. I just, I want to give you guys some encouragement. If you, if you've got gut problems, like there's something that you can do about it, yeah. like more, more, <laughs> way more than what you realize, but it's just that no one's really singing about these kinds of things. And then the area that you look at with weight loss, you really don't hear about these kinds of things. So, um, so, the other so thing yeah, I'll... so gut stuff is, oh, sorry, yeah. I just wanted to say yeah. too about yeah. candida, um, because it thrives in the acidic gut, so do worms and heavy metals. Hi. So the worms love to live in and around the heavy metals and the yeah. um, and candida. If you've got candida, you've got worms or parasites um, or both. And, um, hey, sure. and uh, yeah, you'll also most likely have some form of heavy metals sitting around too. Yeah, I remember when I uh, needed you to look at a, a cleansing product for me and you were like, oh, this is great. Essentially, everyone's being dewormed. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, perfect. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. 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 In fact, you took a look at, um, uh, you were telling me about um, some of the the big bellies that you'd seen, you know, the, the, the woman with the really, really big bellies and how that was just so much gut so much of a gut problem and a, yes. and a bacteria problem and a yeah yeah yeah, you, you, yeah. yeah. sometimes yeah. you can look at those yeah. big pictures and they're round and yeah. swollen and you just go yeah. oh yeah. candida yeah and you, right and Worms. and they think that's all fat but it's it's not the case mm. like sure there's a good amount of fat there but we're also looking at like the amount of fluid retention from the the poor liver that's struggling and the and the gut and the um, inflammation and the yeah inflammation yeah. So right there's a lot more because inflammation is all around the fat cells and part of losing mm -hmm. weight is actually first of all reducing that inflammation so that you can body mm -hmm. can get into the fat cells right which is why when you initially lose weight it seems like you're losing it fast because you're losing fluid yeah and then the weight loss slows down and you're like oh what's going on it's it's I, you know at this rate i thought if i lost a kilo a week i'd be there by like july but you know, it's uh, you don't lose fat as fast as what you can lose fluid. That's right. So, yeah, yeah. Okay. Well, Leanne, I think we'll wrap it up there for those three things. Is there anything else that we that you wanted to put in there before we? No, I, th I just wanted to agree. Yes, you are so right about the nutritional component. So, um, because if the if the liver can't get the right nutrients, the glutathione, whatever it is, especially in phase one, yeah. particularly phase two, then. Phase Yep. You're, you're just pushing the proverbial yep. uphill. You're just not going to lose that weight. <laughs> yeah. Your liver's going to stay congested yep. and your health will suffer chronically. Um, and the yep. same as if you've got the gut issues where you're not absorbing your nutrition. Um, simple things, if you're anemic, you, your magnesium pumps in the body can't work properly. It can't get um, the nutrition into the cells. So uh, the nutrition is really, really, really important. If I could agree yeah, so even if yeah, and the nutrition is not you right. Are, it won't work. Oh, then it's not going to. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
yeah so essentially if you are like getting all of the nutrients that's like the foundation yeah. it, it, it it's like the the remedies come in and they're like a suggestion so they say hey body we would really like you to do this but your body still has to have the ability to be able to do this thing mm. that the remedy is saying it needs to right? make the enzymes and so yeah and that's all and nutrition is all the components of how that works and so yeah i'm really glad that you added that in there you know the um you know that you're doing a real good cleanse when you feel when you go through detox symptoms, if you're not going through detox symptoms, you're doing it wrong. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah. At some point you should experience uh, some, all right. Cause that's the body getting rid of stuff. And, um, and then also you should feel nutritionally really well supported. And so when you are feeling good, you should feel, you should feel great. And your body should be, Hey Tash, um, thriving off of those nutrients, like sucking them up like a sponge. And yeah. so when you are feeling good, yeah. you're feeling good and it'll help you to move through those detox symptoms faster. So really in a nutshell, when we, when we, what we've talked about tonight is what weight loss really looks like when it's done properly. And, um, and when it's done properly, it actually contributes to that long-term result, that long-term result, mm -hmm. that adherence, because along the way, as you're going through the journey and you're learning and you're learning more about your body and how it functions and you're unraveling emotionally and physically, you know, you just become a, a much, you, you become a much better version of yourself, like yeah. the, the best version of yourself along the way. And as you go through that, you never want to go back. Yeah. You, you, you don't, you just don't because you feel so well that you become your greatest asset. And Everything that you do, that you're that you're throwing money at, that you're throwing resources at, you you'll find that you just become more um, willing to do that because you want to protect the greatest asset that you'll have, which is your, the one, the body that you live in, right? Absolutely, your so, health is your best investment. Yeah, hundred percent. And we don't realize that until so, we get our late forties, early fifties, and things and are really bad. Yeah. 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 Yeah, and we first get that hint of it after we have kids. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And we're like, oh, maybe I should have given a shit. <laughs> yeah. 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 Okay, so um, good solid foundation with your nutrition. Get some basic nutritional principles underneath your belt. Mm -hmm. um, consider homeopathy as the um, as like the natural medicine that you would use to help your body to get into balance and to encourage detoxification, and then find a real good nutritional cleanse. All right, to help the help the liver to to be able to do its job optimally. Mm -hmm. So, guys, I hope that you got some great value uh, from us tonight, and uh, and maybe just a bit of a uh, a couple of light bulbs. I hope some light bulbs went off um, here and there tonight, and. Look, if you have really resonated with uh, with us tonight as we're speaking about um, our you know our own experiences and the experiences that we've seen with our clients and what they're going through, if you're finding that you just are really wanting to get on top of your health, really get your body back, feel awesome, maybe even get into better shape than you were ever in before, but you've just failed so many times that you don't have the motivation to just try again, I'm telling you, just give it another shot. Yeah, you know there. If, just give it another shot, but this time when you do it, do it with some, do it with some good principles underneath your belt. Okay, do it with a a, a support system that, um, and a process that is actually encouraging health rather than focusing on weight loss. Yes. All right. Fat and weight is a symptom. It's not the it's not the thing. All right. It's just one symptom of many other symptoms that you'll be experiencing. Mm -hmm. So. Um, on that note, feel free to uh, pop any comments in the uh, comments box and and um, reach out to me if you'd like to know a little bit more about how we do things. And um, if you've got any questions, feel free to reach out. Otherwise, we will see you again. Thanks, Leanne, for coming Thanks, on. Thanks, Karen. For your time. I had fun. Have a fantastic week, guys. <laughs> see you later. See ya. <laughs> see ya.